Yeah, we, we get to tell you the best thing about Sean, well, besides his own qualifications, but do you see the last bit of his bio, which was also present on the meetup? He has a newfound passion for houseplants. I really enjoy when there's a little personal zest to any bio, and I encourage all of us to follow suit. And you know from the meetup description that Sean uh, is a developer advocate for Postman, and I know personally that he just loves sharing knowledge and helping people succeed in their role. A huge user base. I think the largest user base of anybody that I've had the opportunity to know personally. And uh, now we get a chance to hear from Sean. Thanks so much for that introduction. I appreciate it. Um, and I will, I'll, I'll give a quick plug for Postman. That, that 19 million number is, is out of date as of uh, like a few days ago. We just announced that we moved up to 20 million. So it was a very exciting number for Postman. Um, but yeah, hey everyone, I am Sean Keegan. As Barry said, I'm a developer advocate at Postman. Um, so I'm, I'm super excited to be here. Um, I will do my best to keep an eye on the chat. Um, I'm gonna share my screen. I've got a few slides and then I'll jump in um, to, to the demo portion because I think that's the most exciting part. But stick with me for a few minutes and we'll, I'll show you a few slides. Um, so give me just a sec. Cool. Barry, can you confirm that everyone's seeing uh, my screen? Sweet. All right. And I just want to make sure I've lost the chat now. So give me a sec so I can make sure I don't miss anything. Perfect. Um, awesome. Yeah. So um, thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, this session is called uh, Creating Documentation Developers Will Love and Use. Right? I threw a cheesy exclamation point in there because, um, you know, what's documentation if, if people aren't you know, using it and finding it and consuming it? So um, that's what I'm going to kind of talk about today is um, creating different docs, creating different types of documentation uh, and how to make it something that people find and use. So that'll make more sense as we get further on. Um, yeah, like I said, my name is Sean Keegan, developer advocate at Postman. My, my Twitter, Admiral, Twitter handle is DevRelSean if you wanted to check anything out on Twitter. And yeah, from here, just a quick overview of the agenda. Um, I think, you know, I think if you're joining this, you're probably familiar with a lot of things documentation related. Um, but I'll just go over a few kind of things like what is an API publisher, um, you know, introduction to documentation, stuff that like, you know, just kind of get on the same page, uh, have some common vocabulary, uh, and just talk about some of the things that, you know, I think about and that I think Postman can help do. So this isn't necessarily a Postman specific talk, but a lot of the things I show you will be um, you know, using the Postman tool to, to kind of generate documentation. Um, so also talk about different types of API documentation. Um, and we'll see what, you know, I'm curious what folks think about, but you know, hopefully um, you know, we'll talk about a few different types. Uh, and then making your API discoverable. So right, this kind of handles that, uh, you know, making it something that people will use, right? So it's gotta be something that people can find if it exists and no one knows about it, you know, how good is documentation? Um, and I am in New York City, so if you hear some, some yelling or dogs barking or sirens, please, please bear with me. Um, then I'll share a few resources and of course leave some time at the end for, for Q and A. Cool, so what I wanna talk about now, again, this is kind of just like getting folks on the same page and thinking about APIs a bit. Right, so when we talk about API publishers um, here at Postman, um, I think a lot of time what people think about is uh, you know public documentation and things that are available uh, openly on the web. Right, like if I want to use you know Twilio's API, um, it's pretty easy to find. I know you know Twilio API. I Google it, go to their reference documentation. They have all sorts of information, um, so that's that's public. Um, and right, we have this kind of like iceberg example. And it shows, you know, our public APIs that we just talked about, um, and then partner APIs, right? So these are going to be APIs that are you know, private, only shared with like integration partners, um, but you know, still used and consumed by folks outside of you know your team. Um, but really, so just for quick numbers, these are numbers that we found uh, external APIs. So this uh, public APIs only represents about seventeen percent of APIs available. Um, the partner APIs found represent about 27% of APIs and in our like little iceberg picture, right? The stuff that's not seen, you know, more than half of APIs are private APIs. 
right? And these are going to be things that are used only by your team or your company. Um, now, why does this matter, right? Um, because whoever's using the API doesn't matter if it's public facing or internal facing. Um, whatever kind of API exists, it's important that the consumers of them know how to use them, right? Um, and this is going to be where documentation comes into play. Um, documentation can mean different things to different people, right? Reference documentation, workflow guides, um, examples, right? Like all of these factor in the documentation. Um, and so this is kind of what we're going to talk about is how to how to make sure anybody that's coming along and finding or consuming your API has a positive experience and can actually get started. Cool. So hopefully by the end of today, um, these are the kind of things we'll talk about. Um, you know, I kind of hinted at some of these, just explain the influence of documentation on user onboarding, right? So I'm sure folks in the chat, you can, you can talk about horror stories of like using doc or not finding docs and trying to use an API. Um, We'll talk about some of the you know, checklist items for making good documentation. Uh, we'll actually get started by taking an open API specification um, and generating documentation directly from that. Again, we'll use Postman for that. Um, then we'll build some sample workflows. Uh, we will publish a public workspace. I, I knew I was gonna stutter on that. I tried so hard not to. Um, but yeah, so we'll talk about how to take something um, and make it public so that it is discoverable. And then lastly, sharing documentation in the Postman API network, right? So just that, that next step of like making something public uh, and then making it so that people can find it. And then a few quick stats, because I think they're very interesting and I think they're relevant to what we're talking about tonight. And I think folks here might find it interesting as well. Um, <coughs> I'm sorry, <coughs> excuse me. So, you know, I'm sure folks can, can identify with this, right? Uh, obstacles to consuming APIs, um, lack of documentation is often a problem, right? Lack of knowledge comes in second, but time in and time out, you know, so Postman has run this state of the API report and we see that lack of documentation is a huge pain point, at least a bad developer experience. Uh, it it uh, greatly increases that time to first call, right? If people can't follow examples or, you know, learn how to get started, um, people can get frustrated and quit or just spend more time and have a negative experience. Um, oftentimes, like I'll look for, you know, APIs, even if it's from a smaller company, um, you know, like two similar APIs, I'll just look for the one that has better documentation and not, you know, I don't care if it's the bigger names, what's documented better, which one's going to allow me to do what I want quicker. Another quick stat, so documentation experiences, right? This kind of made me sad when I saw this one in the, in the report, you know, the, the average score is five, like documentation is okay. Um, so, you know, hopefully we can, we can improve that. Um, you know, post mass some tools to, to hopefully help make that a more positive experience. But yeah, just a little context on, you know, where the current state of things are. Um, in this one, right? So what, what are things that, you know, people want uh, to make documentation better, right? Better examples, sample code, standardization, right? So things that maybe people have already heard and seen, but these are the things that we see, like, you know, you could, you could pick multiple things. So that's why we have, you know, 65 and 62%. But um, yeah, like better examples is, is not a common one. And we'll see kind of how to do that today. And with that said, I'm about to jump into the demo. So if you want to follow along, sorry, give me just a second. I'm gonna mute myself to cough. All right, nothing like a few quiet seconds there. Um, but yeah, if you want to follow along, um, feel free to log into Postman, right? So just go to postman.com, create an account, uh, and you'll be able to, to do everything that I'm doing. Um, otherwise, feel free to just watch um, and follow along. If you're watching the recording, um, you can, you know, or if you're here and watching the recording later, you can follow along then too. So um, let's go ahead and, and jump in. So. What I'm going to do is actually start, um, I'm in Postman, and I'm going to zoom in here. So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm in Postman, and I'm in a workspace that I created um, just to try to do some, some basic collection creation, uh, mess around with documentation. Um, so what I'm going to do is just start with um, an API that already exists, right? So I'm going to assume the role here of um, a backend API developer 
Um, my team has created an API. We've defined it using the Open API specification. Um, so I'm just going to look at this. I'll, I'll drop this link in for everybody to see. I'll zoom in. This is actually for the New York Times bestseller list. So if you want to check out this API definition, um, there's the link for you in the chat. And <clears throat> what I'm going to do is let's, I'm just going to copy this. So let's say this workflow exists, whether or not it, it's a private API, public API. I just happen to choose a public one so folks could follow along. Um, but this is the actual um, New York Times open API specification. So what I'm going to do is now in Postman, I actually want to import this API. And again, I'm you know, imagining that I'm a backend developer, my team defined this. And now we said, all right, like let's, let's go ahead and, and document it, right? I could just send this spec to, to somebody and say, yep, all the info you need is right here. Like why, why do you need documentation? Um, well, because we're not machines, right? And like reading JSON, unless you really love it, isn't <clears throat> the most enjoyable experience. Um, <clears throat> so what, what you're able to do in Postman, which is pretty convenient, is if you find, so I just did a workspace, and if you find this import button here, um, right, I actually have the ability to, from a link, right, and this is just the link um, from where, where the API exists, uh, I'm just going to enter that URL and <laughs> actually have that, that was the body. So I'm going to come back here, copy the URL. Um, and if I import this URL here and just click continue, really nice, right? This is one of the advantages of, you know, common specifications. In this case, the open API specification, uh, I'm able to take that JSON, import it via, directly via this link. Uh, and you can see that, you know, I have this books API in the open API 3.0 format. And I'm going to import it as an API. Um, from here, I could do a few other things, but I'm not going to generate the collection just yet. Uh, so I'm going to uncheck this box and just import the API. And we'll see what that looks like in Postman, right? Going from this open API specification uh, into and pulling that into Postman. So something we can work with. Okay, I'll click here. Um, now you can see, right, <clears throat> do I want to publish this to the private API network? And this is just something that will allow my teammates to see it. Um, because I, you know, this is just a sample account, I'm gonna click no for this for now. Um, so this, this currently only exists in my workspace. Like there's no, you, you can't find it. Um, I can't share it with any, I could share it with anybody, but it's not shared with anybody. Um, so from here, right, I'm in my workspace and you can see now I'm under this APIs tab uh, and that's where this books API just got imported. Um, and again, like the whole idea of this, this session is talking about documentation and like creating documentation. So we we're taking our API spec um, and I have this first version, which is just the draft version. You can see there's not a lot of info on this overview page. This is where I could come in. This is kind of like, you know, the UI in Postman if I want to change it. But let's come to this definition tab here. Okay, a few things to point out, right? This, I'm just gonna collapse this so we can see it a little bit better. My mouse is gigantic so that people can see it and it makes uh, clicking around kind of tough. Well, okay, we're keeping this pain up for now. Um, but yeah, so a few things to look, you can see, right? This, this is just the same JSON that we had in here. It's just, you know, now it's been imported via the link. Um, if I wanted to change it in Postman, I could do that here, um, but I really, I'm going to zoom out for a second just to try to make it a little bit less clunky. I don't know why I can't collapse this, but okay, we'll just go with it. Um, so yeah, th this is the same the same uh, text that I just copied or that I just brought over from here. You can see, you know, in Postman, thanks to the Open API specification, it, it kind of lays things out uh, here, and it kind of looks like a reference documentation. Um, you know, page, we can see the different paths and we see the different uh, things that are available in this, um, right? If I start scrolling, and again, if you're not super familiar with JSON or open API format, that's totally fine. We're gonna see how even without that knowledge, you can still generate some, some great um, documentation, um, right? So here we can see we have our base URL. We can start to see some of the paths that exist, right? So here's a get request for, you know, getting different lists. Um, you know, I have a description, information on these requests, keep scrolling down. Um, 
Right now I can see examples. So this is what would happen on a successful 200 response. Uh, all right, I get information on this. I can see the various, um, you know, bits of information on it. So pretty cool. But again, th this isn't, you know, documentation. This is just, you know, the, the definition. Um, one really nice thing about Postman is if I now come over to this documentation tab, everything that's from here is going to be automatically ported into this, you know, what looks like reference, reference documentation. Um, so I didn't have to do anything. I just took, you know, the API um, definition, imported it to Postman, and now I can see this kind of live version of the documentation from that API specification, right? You can see this is what we were just looking at before, right? Here's the, the base URL, here's our get requests, you know, here are the various, you know, here's authorization, the various parameters. Um, if I keep scrolling down, I'll see examples, right? So here's that, you know, 200, I can toggle between body and headers. So this is a nice, you know, step one, right? If, if folks have the definition, they can come in here, see this, um, and it's pretty helpful, right? And this is a live view, right? So if I were to come in and change, um, change something in the definition, let's say the books API, you know, let's just say we wanted to make this a few exclamation points. And I saved it. This is, I don't recommend this for documentation. This is just uh, me having a little fun, but you can see this is a, like a live look here. Um, and I'm gonna go back and change it to period. All right, and then when I go back to this documentation tab, we'll see that it is indeed done here. Cool, all right. So this is you know, documentation that exists in the API uh, section of Postman. But what I really wanna do is let's go ahead and generate a collection based on this, um, right? A, a documentation collection that people can see and ultimately use. Like that's the goal of, of this, is being able to create something that folks can um, uh, you know, consume. Uh, so I'm gonna click this generate collection button here. And I'm gonna call it uh, Books API Reference. Um, and if you're not familiar with Postman, a collection is gonna be just a group of requests that you can actually um, send, right? So the documentation that we just saw before, it's just like a, a, a view that you can see, um, but a collection is gonna actually let us you know, make requests ourselves. So let's go ahead and click this API documentation because that's what we're ultimately creating a collection for. Um, and I'm gonna unfurl this here for show advanced settings. So this is where you can kind of control, like depending on how your uh, API is defined, you know, you have some control over uh, how it actually gets imported and how the collection gets created. Um, so in this case, right, if, you, you know, if you're a spaces versus tabs company or person, you know, this is something that you can look into. <clears throat> um, the various, you know, collapsing redundant folders. So you have different options to control things. Um, for here, where it says request parameter generation, um, you can request it to, to be based on the schema or the example in the schema. I'm actually gonna change this one to schema because we looked at what we saw before. Um, this is gonna be the option that we want based on our definition. Um, you do the same thing with response parameters. Uh, the folder organization can be based on, you know, the tags uh, or the specs path. Um, because of the way ours is uh, created, we're gonna stick with paths for now. Um, and yeah, a few other things, we can disable optional parameters and so forth. But let's go ahead and generate the collection from here. It's gonna take a quick sec and it's gonna let us know that it created it. And again, so right, we're, we're now creating a collection that um, is created from that, from that API definition and it's gonna represent that um, that collection from when we created it, or sorry, represent the, the API definition from when we created this collection. So let's go ahead and view documentation. And this should look pretty similar to what we just saw in that API port, uh, in the API pane, um, but we have our you know, reference documentation. We can see information on um, you know, what the API does, uh, right, we can see information on lists. Um, and you know, then the, the various examples and stuff like that. Um, so one of the things here, right, just to start, um, I'm actually gonna click collections and we can kind of see this is exactly what we're looking at. Um, the reason that view looked different was because it took us right to this view complete collection documentation. So I'm gonna click this and this is exactly what we were just looking at. I just wanted to kind of show you where it came from. 
Uh, and what's nice is this is where, you know, we can kind of start enhancing that uh, developer experience and explaining like what exists in, you know, each folder. So here's, here's this list folder, but it doesn't have, you know, any sort of description. And Postman here tells us like, let's make a description to let us know what's in here, right? So this is just, so now we're in this uh, editor, right? And uh, Postman has the ability to, you know, edit like what you see is what you get. So I can like, you know, make headers this way or, you know, bold text, or you could use old school, you know, markdown. So whatever, whatever you're more comfortable with, um, this just allows you to, you know, add a little bit more information. So I'm going to just go with the, the, what you see is what you get. It's a little bit easier than, um, you know, doing markdown, uh, you know, depending on your comfort level with markdown, but let's just say, so this is that list folder and we'll say, uh, this folder contains all of the various, uh, uh, lists in the New York times, uh, uh, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> All the various lists you can get from the MIT API. Um, right, if I wanted to, you know, I don't know, bold something or whatever, right? Like whatever's gonna make your, your developer um, consumer's experience better, you know, that's how you can control it. Um, so let's save this. Right, for now, we just want to put a little thing in there. Um, let's scroll down a little bit and we can see, right, this is why I kind of chose, um, you know, having that tag for the parameters because we have, you know, we want to let us know what each, uh, you know, query param is. You know, we have a string and this is kind of an, an example of each thing. Um, right, so this is our reference documentation just giving us that, that picture here. I could keep scrolling, um, but that's what we're, that's what we're going to see. Um, so this is a pretty easy way. This is, you know, Postman is one tool that you can use to go from, right, this open API definition, um, you know, and, and creating a reference documentation. So in a few clicks, you can do that in Postman pretty easily. Um, and so that's, you know, us creating reference documentation because we already had that API specification. So let's transition a little bit now and, you know, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the chat. So if folks do have questions or something comes up, like feel free to let me know. I'm, I'm happy to, to, you know, kind of take it live. Um, otherwise I'll keep plugging away. And, you know, so the next thing we want to do, right, we just successfully generated um, an API from the, uh, an API reference from the open API. Let's see, we got some questions. Okay. Uh, if you edit the documentation, does the API spec also get updated? Yeah, that's a great question. Right, so let's let's see what happens. There is a way to sync it, um, but if I were to change something here, like right now, it's going to just stay um, in this version. Um, this I could have it synced so that you know things that I change in the API do get synced to the collection and have them have them sync back and forth. So that is a great question. Um, right, if you want to keep them in sync with each other. Um, but otherwise, like right now, I, I'm able to change it and just have it, right, this is the collection I want um, to just live as is and be able to consume and change and do, and, you know, do the various like requests I want. Um, I'm going to save this question from LLBP um, just because it, it looks pretty in depth and I wanna make sure I get through the, the you know, bulk of the content, but LLBP, if I have time, I will certainly get back to that. I think that's great, uh, great questions. Um, so yeah, okay. So we're gonna pivot slightly and now say like, all right, I'm no longer a backend uh, API developer. Now I'm somebody like myself on the developer relations team. And I wanna make sure that, you know, folks can find the API and get started with it, do cool things, right? You know, this is a pretty straightforward API, um, right? The names kind of tell us what we're gonna do, but, you know, I think another good part of documentation is creating workflows or creating examples of what you can do if you come across an API. Give me just a sec. Um, and so that's this next step here. So let's, let's say I want to create a new collection that does something cool, and that's going to be a new, you know, uh, piece of documentation. 
So I'm going to create uh, a new collection. I'm going to call this, hmm, I'll call it workflow, get um, reviews of best selling author. Okay. Um, and so basically what we're going to do is we're going to make use of, you know, this API that already exists. Um, we have the documentation for it. Um, now let's create a workflow. So I'm going to just do, um, get this bestseller list. Here's a handy tool in Postman. Um, I can just duplicate this request, uh, right? So it's bestseller copy. I'm going to drag it into this folder here. Um, and then I'm also going to duplicate this reviews folder. So I have reviews copy. And I'm going to drop that in here as well. So now what I'm going to basically do is create this workflow where I'm going to get uh, the bestseller list. Um, I'm going to change the name so that no one knows that I copied it. This is just me creating a workflow. Looks like I just did all this fancy work, but really I just you know, duplicated these requests. Um, and from here, right, um, I'm going to come back up here and we'll, we'll take a look and see like, um, you know, all of this was created from the open API specification. You can see that there's already all of these um, like variables that exist and these were taken from the definition. So, you know, Postman or another tool is able to read that definition and just pull it in. Um, and so from here, I know I need, right, if I were to go to try to, you know, click this, you can see that these are unresolved variables. Um, so I need to basically get these and give ourselves um, a way for this new collection to know what to do here. So I know from our previous collection that this is our base URL. I'm just going to copy this. Um, and instead of this variable here, I know I also need um, uh, format. This is actually, I know it's going to be JSON. Um, so let's go ahead and save format uh, as JSON. And the last thing I'm going to need, right, if I were to try to send this uh, uh, request now, which we don't have format. Um, so let's see. Um, for format, this is good. You, um, I thought I was prepared, but now you can see me uh, struggle live here because I forget what format it's supposed to be. Um, so um, if I were to send this request, I know I need, or I don't know what, why is this saying format's not? Oh, I didn't save it, okay. Um, Right, so now all these should be resolved variables. Um, but if I tried to send it, you know, we can see what happens, right? I'm gonna send it and I'm gonna get just an invalid API key. So I'm gonna, I have my API key copied. Um, and let's go ahead. And you can see, so another thing that it pulled in right from the definition, right, is the authorization. It says I need an API key. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and save my API key here, um, uh, you'll see it for a sec, okay. <laughs> um, and so now I should be able to send a request and get, hmm, still invalid. Um, all right. So invalid API key. <laughs> Riveting string. <Yeah. laughs> But did you save it? <laughs> I love uh, before. I, I, so I think I know what it is, right? So right now, here's the issue. It's, uh, I am trying to send this as the API value, but because I'm using variables. Um, but yeah, Barry, that is a, a great question. That is often the, the thing people forget, right? If you see this like little dot that usually tells us that things are unsaved. Um, and so here I just have to use the actual variable instead of that placeholder text. All right, so I'll save this. And now if I click send, <laughs> um, what do I have from now? Ah, okay. So I just I need to actually pick a list. Um, in this case, let's do uh, hardcover fiction. And click send. Okay, cool. So now we have uh, a request that came through. 
And again, the whole, the whole purpose here is we're trying to generate a workflow that, that folks can use and find valuable. So um, right now, let's say we have this request here and we can see that uh, the author for this is uh, John Stan Sanford. What I want to do now is get reviews for this person, John Sanford. Um, so I am going to cheat a little bit and copy and paste some code because this isn't, you know, the, the main portion of what we're doing here is, isn't like creating this code here. But um, basically what we're doing is I'm saving these results and then uh, I am taking this author. Like, so the first author that we get, this John Sanford person, uh, and just saving that as a variable. So, right, if I look right now at this collection, I don't have any author saved, but if I click send now, and now I come back and look at my collection again, I have this John Sanford person. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is, right, so now this code exists in this, uh, in this request. So every time this request runs, it will save the newest person here. And now if I click reviews, right, I want to say, I want to get the author. And here's where, you know, I could put John Sanford and have it come back. But if this is a, you know, a request or a series of requests that I want other people to be able to use and have it live more than just like this one time where John Sanford happens to be the most popular writer, this is where I'm going to use a variable, right? And I'm going to use that author variable that I just saved. And if I click send, let's just make sure. Uh, yep, so I have to change this as well. Um, right, and now if I click send, right, author should give me John Sanford here. And it gives us a successful thing, right? I, I now have that, um, I get information on John Sanford. So very basic workflow, but again, let's go ahead. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Barry, I'm glad that you're like John Sanford. I'm glad uh, you recognize him. Um, but uh, yeah, right. So from here, the whole idea is, cool, we've created this workflow. Here's one example of documentation that folks have, right? Here is the reference documentation. But now we've created this example that folks can come in and get started and say, oh, all right, like I know exactly what's going to happen here. So I'm going to save these. Um, and... X them out for now, just so we clean things up a little bit. Um, so now that I'm in this collection, I'm gonna click this documentation thing, uh, this documentation icon here. And this will allow us to kind of create, give, give people more information, um, right? So I'm gonna give some information and say, uh, this workflow allows you to get, um, reviews for the current number one author of hardcover fiction. Um, right, so I'm adding in inscription and letting, letting people know who come across this, what's happening in this collection. Um, let's go ahead and add in a nice little header that just says, uh, you know, getting started, right? So this is what the collection does. If I wanted to add information on authorization, right? You know, this is where we're gonna start telling, helping people out and giving them this information on what to expect and what's in this workflow, right? So what do you need to do? Um, go to the New York Times uh, developer site and get an API key, uh, right? And if I, wanted to uh, forget the exact website, but I can, you know, add in this link here. Uh, right, so I say, go to the New York Times developer site. I can add in a link like this. Uh, right, so this, this is, some information that you would certainly want folks to have if they're coming, you know, into your your page or into your workflow. Um, you know, next we could say, you know, how to use this workflow. I think this is an H2, so let's make this an H2 as well. Um, 
we'll say, you know, fork this collection into your own workspace, right? So in order to be able to use this collection, you'd have to fork it so that you can use the local version of it. Um, step two, run uh, bestseller list. Um, request and then run reviews request. I'll add one more little step and say add your API key to the authorization. Um, cool. So I'll save this, right? This is a nice, you know, like I said, what you see is what you get. Um, I don't have to worry about markdown. I can save it. And now folks that come to this collection Right, we'll see like, all right, I know what's happening. I know what to do. Um, and so it's you know, different than the reference docs. You know, now I have, uh, you know, like a tutorial for people to, to look at. Um, so that's that. Um, looking at what Barry said. So Postman auto-generated docs are just one component of documentation. Exactly, yep. Right, generating collection gives a space for creating examples using data at the endpoint. Generating collection gives a space. Uh, Barry, can, would you mind explaining on what you mean by, by that question? I just, I'm not. Well, I saw, well, I saw the open API spec and you gave us the URL, but then I wasn't sure where the list of the books and the authors, where you got that from. Did you build a query and then you gave it a place to grab things from? I missed that part. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. So. I took, right, like you said, so this was the, the reference documentation that was created um, from the open API. Uh, and then what I said was basically, all right, imagine this was a much longer series of requests and it was like overwhelming. I wasn't sure like what to do if I was just coming across it. What I wanted to do is say, create something that people could stumble across and make, make use of some of the requests in here right away. And so I created this or this collection, just called like basically it's two work two collection <laughs> two requests in a row, making up this workflow. And so what I did is I knew the original reference uh, collection had this bestseller list request, so I just copied it and added that one to this workflow. Uh, and then I did the same thing for reviews because I knew this existed already here, and I don't want to change this collection per se. I just want to reuse that functionality into my own workflow. Um, so I just copied them and added it here. So now I can like use them um, one after another. And so this is just like one, one basic workflow that people could use um, uh, with, this, with this API. Um, and then from here, right? Like, so I've added some, some documentation to this workflow. Hopefully this would help people get started uh, if they came across it. Um, the last thing I would want to do, and again, this is like a basic example, but you know, let's get this in the hands of people so that they can they can experience it. Um, so what I would do is let's come to this workspace overview. Right now, you can see this little icon here just means that it's a team workspace. Um, but if I want to make this public, I will just come here. And so from team, I'll just click public and this globe icon tells folks or tells me that this workspace is now available for anybody to access. So, you know, I'm gonna zoom back in. You know, folks that come here, right? Anybody can go to this URL and I'll drop it in the chat. So if you wanna join me in here, go ahead. You'll actually, you'll see your, your little icon pop up if you're in Postman. Um, but yeah, right, so now it's the public workspace. Anybody that wants to come here can. So since that's here, um, I'm going to add some, some information and just say, um, welcome, uh, to get started, click a collection for more info. Um, right. So now I have some very basic information. I can control, you know, like what people are seeing and, and give them, uh, more information. Oh, hello. I see some friends in here. Awesome. Um, and yeah, so like another way we can, you know, help get this in the hands of developers and, right, you know, get it, make it so that people can actually come across this and use, you know, this documentation is uh, this ability to share. And I'm going to close this for, for now. Um, and you'll see the share button here. Uh, and if I click this, 
this gives me a few different ways that I can share this collection with, with different folks, whether it's on my team, whether it's publicly. Um, right. So I could directly, you know, email them or invite them here. Uh, I could do like via JSON link. And that would be like just a static version, like that represents this exact version of it from when I created this button. Um, but what I want to do is via this run and postman button. And what this is, is uh, it's a button that you can embed on your website. And when folks click it, they will get the, the most up-to-date version or like the current version of that collection and be able to fork it right away. Um, and so I'm not gonna add environment just because I don't have any environments, but you can pair an environment with the collection. Um, so let's just do the markdown friendly version. I'm gonna copy the code and X this out here. Um, and now if I wanted to, right, so this again, you know, getting this in the hands of people, um, I'm going to just add this button and say, you know, click this giant button if you want to fork the workflow collection. And I'll paste that markdown that I just copied. Oh, it didn't work. Um, I'm gonna do it again real quick and just share this. I'm, I'm not sure what happened. Uh, via run and postman, markdown friendly. And now I've copied the code in theory. And I wanna add that to my documentation here. Oh yeah, I see, I'm in, I'm in postman editor. So let's see if I go to the classic markdown if it lets me. Barry, you are saving the day left and right today. Thank you so much. Um, Cool, so now if I save it, we're gonna see this bright orange button uh, and this is formatted horribly. I'm just you know running tight on time and don't wanna go over. Um, but yeah, right now I can see that I have this run and posting button. And if anybody um, that's in here clicks on it, it'll allow them to fork it. And now you know they'll be able to get that collection, um, that workflow collection that I made you know anywhere. So let's fork it. And I'll just fork it directly into that workspace. So you can see, I'm just gonna have another one of them. Um, I don't, let me ask why so slow? I'm not sure. I don't know if it's on, on my end or Postman's end or, or, you know, um, or, you know, other internet, but yeah, hopefully it goes a little bit quicker. So let's fork it directly in here. Um, and this does seem to be going a little bit slow. I'm not sure exactly why today. Um, but yeah, right. So here's, Here's that forked version. It's the exact same thing. Obviously, it doesn't make a ton of sense to fork it into the place where I had it originally, um, right? So you can fork it anywhere you like, or you know what you can do is also take the code for this button and embed it on you know your developer page, um, you know a blog post, like whatever makes the most sense, um, right? This is just another form of that documentation. Um, in this case, it's like a little workflow documentation. Um, so that's that's kind of my my quick overview of things. Um, I'll just kind of wrap up quickly. Um, uh, sorry, I just want to share the right thing. But yeah, right. So that was our demo. Uh, you know, hopefully you know, these were kind of some of the things that we covered. Um, you know explain the influence of documentation in your onboarding, right? Like having a positive experience, is super valuable. I think those slides at the beginning, you know, talked about how, uh, like what, what developers think about documentation right now. Um, and yeah, you know, good checklist for documentation. So we talked about some of the things like having authorization, having info on getting started, um, stuff like that. Uh, this is what we did at first when we generated that open API specification. Um, so in a few clicks, we were able to generate uh, reference docs. Um, right, we just built that sample workflow of getting user reviews. Um, right, and then these last two kind of go hand in hand. We, we made the workspace public. You know, we saw folks in there. We saw folks able to um, you know, see the collection that we made. Uh, and then we shared it in the Postman API network. I didn't actually talk about that a ton, but what happened when I made it public is now if I search for, you know, this thing, creating documentation developers uh, would enjoy. Uh, eventually I'll see this, it might not just have uh, registered just yet, but um, 
right? Adding it to the public API network means that you know folks can find it um, and post them there. Um, and yeah, I think that's kind of all I've got for now. I have some other you know resources if you if you wanted. These are you know kind of specific to to Postman. There's plenty of tools out there for um, you know documentation and API. Um, reference documentation generation <laughs> from an open API. Um, yeah, so that is my my quick overview. If folks want, I, I will drop these um, links in the chat. Um, at at the end, like after Q&A, I'll drop it in if folks stick around for a bit. But um, yeah, so that's Q&A. And I'll stop sharing for now because I'll take some questions in the chat. Let's see. Um, so Carol asked, perhaps this is obvious to others, but how do you ensure that users have the latest version of the collection after they fork the collection? Does it auto update or do they have to pull in the latest version? That is a fantastic question, Carol. So it is, it, the collection, if you fork it, is synced to the original collection. And so, you know, folks get that version that they, that they fork, but, you will get, you can get updated on when changes are made. And so you can work on it, you can make your own changes, but you also have the ability since it's synced to that parent collection to pull in changes um, when or if they're made. Um, so it's a, it's a nice way to like, you know, be able to work, but also keep things uh, up to date. Uh, Tony asked, do you, do you find a lot of documentation written in the Postman editor? Uh, Good question. I think Tony, are you asking in that? Uh, if you could, if you could clarify on that one, if you're, if you mean like, um, like in the you demonstrated. Thank you. You demonstrated um, using the actual editor within Postman, like using Postman as your authoring tool. And I'm just curious, like when um, other common workflows include using like a Markdown or ASCII doc or other static site generator workflow to um, build this kind of stuff. Like that's what we're using right now. We're using a static site generator workflow. So we're authoring in Markdown in different files and then using some magic in JavaScript to link our Postman collections to our Markdown files. But I was just curious if a lot of editors, a lot of writers um, you're finding are using Postman primarily for authoring. Um, Cause that's, uh, so, cause you, your editor is really quite slick and full featured, right? So I'm just curious how that all kind of fits in with uh, my second question, which is about the review cycles and getting different people involved in reviewing your doc. Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, Postman's made, you know, great efforts to, to make it so that it is a tool that's, you know, a, a part of the, you know, your, you know, API lifecycle. And you know, part of that is, you know, documenting and defining it. Um, and, you know, I don't have a ton of insight, I think, right now as to like how how much it's used, how much Postman is used for that purpose versus other tools that people can use. Um, I know that, you know, there's a big push to make it so that Postman is, you know, the only place you need to go. And it's like, if you want it to work, only a Postman that you can. Um, and some folks do. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if I have a great answer in terms of like, you know, how many folks are, are doing it this way versus, you know, using other tools and using Postman as like a part of, um, the workflow versus, you know, doing the majority of stuff in there. Cool. Thanks. I know I can yeah. totally capitalize on this conversation and, but I should probably, <laughs> I probably let other people talk to you. Cool. Well, Terry, Terry Hurd says they were kind of biased towards Swagger, but now open to Postman. Cool. I love it. Nothing against Swagger. Fantastic tool. Um, you know, but, uh, yeah, I think people are always kind of surprised the, the extent to which you can use Postman for, for different things. Um, okay, let's see. So yes, LLBP, I did promise to come back to this question. Uh, is Postman middleware uh, using it to connect to an API with Django REST framework or like you just did today uh, to New York Times book API? So Postman isn't necessarily uh, middleware, in the sense that, you know, what I was just demoing today is, you know, kind of a front end API client tool. Um, but you, I'm not sure this is what you're, what you're asking, but you can use um, what we call, uh, we have a, a command line runner called Newman, 
Um, and that allows you to do all the things that I did uh, in the UI, like in the web today, um, you know, in, in a command line setting. And so you can, you can have Postman run through Newman uh, in, you know, your CI CD pipelines, um, or your automated, automated cron jobs. Um, so it, it can be part of bigger projects outside of just, you know, doing what we did today. Um, hopefully that answers number one. Uh, when would you use Postman versus DRF for different types of API documentation? So yeah, this is going to be one <coughs> me, um, where it really just kind of depends on your use case and, and you know what tools are part of um, you know what what you you and your team end up using. Um, if you think there are things that Postman you know doesn't do that you think you know should would be valuable and and uh, increased likelihood to be part of your workflow, like you know these are things we'd love to hear. Um, and so it, it's hard for me to answer it very much can be like a case by case basis. And I hope that doesn't seem like a cop out answer. That's just, uh, you know, where, where I think things stand right now. Um, and we use a different API strategy for domain driven development. Yeah, I think right, this is another one where it, it really depends on, you know, what you're doing, what the goals are. You can, you know, use, um, various parts of Postman to do testing and do, you know, like, uh, yeah, di different types of uh, development, um, but it's hard to give, you know, a specific answer for, you know, without much context. So I, I, I'm sorry that it's not more helpful potentially. Um, but yeah, yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Um, I think, I think that's all the questions. I hope I, I hope I got through everybody. Um, Did you get to the async review question? Is there a, um, somebody asked, do you have suggestions for incorporating asynchronous review cycles? Ah, um, yeah. So, I mean, again, depending on like, if you're, if you're trying to stay in Postman or doing other, you know, other things, like you do have the ability to, um, you know, like leave comments in, in Postman and, and, you know, be able to, you know, work in there. Um, so, I think somebody else asked about like forking and whether that was like a live version of, of the collection. Um, you know, so you do have the ability to uh, create something and have, have other people on your team or even the public, you know, create pull requests, uh, create, you know, suggestions on changes. Um, so, you know, th these are things that are possible. Tony, I'm not sure if that was, you know, what you're, we what were looking for, but um Actually, you know what would really be cool if we did use Postman entirely for authoring. If you had some way like uh, track changes feature, like in Word, where you could send that whole Postman doc out to somebody else and have them kind of mark it up, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, you can see like there is you know like a change log for um, for workspaces, so you can see you know and and and, and activity log, so you can see like the that's various things that change. That's not inline changes though. Yeah, inline changes is a little bit more kind of what I'm looking for. Like we've got a request now from our, um, one of the things I'm supporting is uh, our, our Postman and API doc generation workflow. And uh, our editors are asking for the ability to go into the finished pages and mark them up. Just sort of say, I want to sort of scratch out this bit and rewrite the section and send this back to the doc writer to edit and put into the um, main file. Yeah, let me, I'll, I'll show you something that you can do and see if this is kind of what um, would be helpful. Um, right, so I can come in and there's this like uh, comments, right? So I can, I can leave a comment here and say like, hi, hi, which is right not not what we're talking about. But let's say I want to look at this workflow and, you know, so right now I'm in editing mode. But if I switch to comment mode, right, I could change something here and say, like, um, I think this should be an integer, um, right? So this isn't in the documentation per se. This is, you know, in the, you know, collection that, you know, in this case, it's the workflow, but you could do this for the you know, documentation collection as well. Um, so... I don't, it's not like a one-to-one -one with, I think, what you're asking for, but 
it's I think closer than just you know adding you know stuff. That is actually an interesting feature. Um, so um, I don't know how much more time we've got for this, but um, are you going planning on showing us the uh, documenter uh, domain site? Have you yeah, seen it, it, you know what I'm talking about, right? I I do. Yeah, yeah. It um I was hoping to get our, some our time. Tool uses that. Yeah, you do use it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, so so for those that, that don't know, what what Tony is asking is, um, at Postman, we you know you have the ability to um generate like your own page of the documentation, um, and I'm I'm so zoomed in, so it's hard to remember where things get pushed. Um, but I, I, in, the, in the interest of time, Tony, I'm probably not gonna clunk around because I it would take me a sec to find it, but um, let me see if I have one that's available quick. Documenter. Yeah, I don't have one ready to go. Um, yeah, I, I'm, for, I'm not gonna share that one just because I can't like find anything right now, but uh, it, it, it is kind of a, a cool tool and, and a way to like, it, it's not something that we are using as, as much. Um, I think the, the documentation in the workspace is more what we're like uh, kind of, you know, guiding people towards. And then I don't know if you saw Jeff's question about a manifest of test cases. Do you have a manifest of test cases from a QA group that focus on documenting the calls that are high priority? Good question. Test case from a QA group to focus on. Uh, to be to be honest, Jeff, uh, I don't know the answer to that one. So rather than than make something up and talk out, you know, out my butt, I'll just I'll admit that I'm not sure on that one. Uh -huh. Right. Is that, I, is that it for questions? That was so awesome. Thank you very much, John. Yeah. I kept up I kept up 90% of the time and then I missed <laughs> one step. So I, I know that many of us will be watching the recording again. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sean. That was really great. We really appreciate you taking some time to show us a little bit more about Postman and what it can do for API documentation and talking about some best practices. That's great.